Yeah, just a little more attention to detail. This is the uh, choke cable, and it goes through the firewall. And there was a hole in the firewall here. It's a, it's already had a uh, rubber grommet or something like that. I guess it must have fell out a long time ago. So what I got was a rubber stopper, and I drilled a hole in a rubber stopper, cut a slit. It fits in there extremely tight. Um, you had to crush the rubber stopper to get it in there. Then I put some uh, emblem adhesive over it. Uh, for gluing emblems on cars, so that, that'll hold it in there. So in other words, you don't want a hole in a firewall where any kind of uh, engine heat can come in, or if it's in the winter time, you don't want any coal to come in. Now, something else, um, I want to show something else here. I didn't realize this. Um, on a gas pedal, there is actually behind the gas pedal, you see this bolt. There's, uh, you could screw this down so you can get more travel of the gas pedal to get full throttle on a carburetor. And I guess maybe I'd have to take this bolt out to get the full throttle, but it's got about over 95% full throttle, and I think that's good enough. So if your Toyota carburetor isn't getting enough throttle by pushing down a gas pedal all the way, it's this bolt. I didn't even notice that behind the pedal, so you can screw that down and get more full throttle out of it. Yeah, I'm going to do a little flush of the radiator core in this thing. And actually, the problem is, if you look at that, there's a hose right here that's kinked. And, um, you know, these jerks at the automotive parts store a long time ago said, yeah, just use a hose in here. But actually, that should be a curved molded hose. I want to get a replacement for that. That's partly the reason it doesn't put out bad heat. But uh, I took these uh, heater hoses off. Now, it's better to take the distributor cap off, just pop it off so you can get in there with a screwdriver. But what I use is a uh, crowbar, gently um, prying it off, and I use a wrench, like uh, pliers, to just kind of break it, you know, going um, back and forth, basically circular, like circular, so the hose basically is not stuck on the uh, brass fittings. And actually, when I put those on there, I use a slight amount of grease, so they come off easier, so I never had a problem. You notice they're a nice brass color, they're not like corroded and stuff. So, um, actually, I keep an old heater hose around here. It's a molded heater hose, and uh, I can blow it out each direction. But what I'm going to do besides that is I'm going to blow it out with air after I blow it out with water. And then I am going to use vinegar and let it sit overnight. And it'll really clean it out one way or the other. And it should actually clean out anything that's in there, uh, no matter how bad it is. The vinegar will do it. And uh, also note that the vinegar will not harm any metal. If, if, if it comes like there's a hole in there after you use the vinegar, it's not because the vinegar ate through the metal. It's because the hole was being plugged up by rust and gunk. Basically, it already had a hole in it as it is. So I'm thinking it probably doesn't have a hole in it, but uh, we shall find out. It probably doesn't. And if you look down here, the water's coming out nice and steady. Uh, it actually never, no rust came out of it. I'm going to flush it the other way. And um, I don't think there's any problem with it at all. But uh, it's going to get flushed anyway. Okay, so I um, took the air hose and I put my hand over it like this. And uh, I blew out whatever water was inside there. Um, so in other words, and the heater core it sits in there like this. It doesn't sit straight up and down or an angle. It sits in there completely flat. And the hoses come up, they come up like this to the top. That's how they go. They go like, you know, it's basically like this. They go down and down to the bottom. And then the heater core sits in there flat like this. So, you know, when I blew the water out of the air in there, all the water's out. So what's going to go in there is vinegar. Now, I want to point out the real problem why this doesn't have heat too much is if you look at this hose, am I pointing to it right good here? Uh, this hose right here, that's kinked. And this is supposed to be a molded hose. I'm going to get a replacement for that. Uh, I'm going to order it right now as a matter of fact. But in the meantime, this will be cleaned out. And there's one other thing I'm going to do. I'm going to show it in a separate video. Um, is how to clean out the air box. There's a trick to that without taking it all apart. But in the meantime here, I'm going to fill this up with vinegar, and I'm going to let it sit overnight. Then I'll flush it out with water again, attach the hoses, and add any freezing. We're all set. 
Okay, so here's the uh, distilled white vinegar, cheap stuff, great value, and I got a funnel up here, so I'm going to pour this in the um, down into heater hose. And again, the heater hose is sitting horizontal, so and I blew out all the water we, by using an air compressor, so it's dry. There's nothing in here, so it'll be just pure straight vinegar sitting in a heater hose overnight. Then in the morning, I'm going to flush it out both directions with pure um, water. So it'll be no vinegar traces in there at all. That should be a very clean heater core. It actually looked clean in the first place. It looks like the kink in the hose is the whole problem why it's not putting out heat. So that's the whole deal. Well, it looks like this piece of hose that I said was put in there, um, you know, in a parts store goes, eh, just use a piece of freaking hose. So it wasn't this kink when I put it in. And as it got older, it heated up and it kinks, so it's actually supposed to have a molded hose. And lo and behold, this is an old heater hose I had from another car. And you know, these this, the end of the heater hose is actually the part that breaks. It gets more weathered and stuff. But look at this. This is perfect. I can actually just cut it right here and right there, and I got a perfectly molded hose, and that's going to be the replacement part. And it's the uh, right diameter, so can't pick that so I'm not even gonna buy the part so this is gonna be a replacement hose that's gonna be installed right now so here's the uh, piece I cut so you can see it's a molded hose it's not gonna have any kinks in it and I'm sure I want to wash this out with some vinegar before I put it on there to make sure um, you know there's no rust inside here where it doesn't you know it, it's in other words it's not rub in other words I don't want rust going over something where it's not gonna seal good because there's a little bit of rust inside this hose in other words, I want pure rubber going over there so it grips good and it seals good. Okay, so this is the um, hose I just made uh, from that other piece of heater hose. And this is the molded portion, so there's no kinks in it. So um, this should provide very good heat. So as this thing sits overnight with the vinegar sitting inside the heater core, uh, I already think it's cleaned out. I think the whole problem was this hose down here was kinked. But... Um, Hey, that's why you keep old parts around, right? Because uh, you never know when you can use them, and uh, why buy another one, and why wait? It's finished. And something else I noticed that this um, was disconnected down here. This is going to the uh, heat control on a dashboard, so I make sure it's in there. And I bent this wire over so it sticks in here very strongly, so it shouldn't pop out anymore. Okay, so flushing out the heater core. Actually, there was no rust that ever came out of this damn thing, so I just let it, the vinegar sit in there about five hours. That should be good enough, and I'll just hook up the heater hoses. There was no clog in this at all. It was that kink hose that was a problem. Okay, those hoses are nice on there, nice and solid. Uh, I always put a, a slight amount of grease on there. Some people say not to do that because it rots the hose, but I don't see where that has a problem. Radiators all filled up, 50% mixture of water and I should have good heat except for one thing and I'm gonna have to go over that in a separate video and that is because uh, there's leaves and debris that fills up inside where the blower motor is and on top of the heater core and airflow doesn't go through it but I should have good water flow going through the heater core now and so I'm gonna have a separate video on how to clean out the air box but uh, there should be plenty of heat in here now and uh, Rocky approves of this message. <laughs> make that noise, you little puppy. Come on. Let me make that little meow noise. You don't want to do it when the camera's on? Huh? There you go. Is that little cute? Is that little. That's like a kitten noise, isn't it? That's a kitten noise, isn't it? You're making a kitten noise, aren't you? I'll tell you what, man, you sure turned out to be another different cat from what you started out to be a couple months ago. Alright, just to check it for no leaks. No leaks are going on here, so, uh, seems good. Still warming up, but, uh, should put out good heat. So, if it doesn't, I don't know. <laughs>